Well, this morning I decided I'd go out to Aragonbeg with permission. And when I got here, I couldn't decide whether it was worth doing it or not. But I've never ever seen a house covered in ivy like this in my life before. Probably owned and farmed these days by an elderly lady who was a, went to land out to a local farmer. Two old uh, boiling pots outside the door. One's still intact, one's definitely not intact. You've bought some spuds and heron in that, that's for sure. Now when I was in here I spotted this, that somebody either pushed the door open or it was left open. So we'll have a look inside, see what it's like. It's maybe going to be too dark to see very much. The video camera's not very good at bad lighting. I only do that today, I don't think. So careful these old places because they're very dark and dingy. This would have been the front room, I guess. There's the old range. Hmm. I don't think it's long, it's not long ago it's been abandoned. Oh, if I stood in the window. On the room next door. Another fireplace. And unfortunately, the uh, and unfortunately the stairs are gone, so that's as far as I'm going to go. And we go up there and fall through the floor, do we? I don't know if you can see that, but that's like a semi-stained glass window. It's a lot of effort has gone into it. Unbelievable. And as you can see. The roof is gone. Such a shame. Dutch barn still intact. It's a wooden structure with asbestos, I believe. Not the class is dangerous these days, but I worked in asbestos barns for years. Dutch barn would be built, I suppose, 50 years ago. Who knows? No, it's not in any of the farm cells I found anyway. It's still standing, so it's well built in its day. Not the bar next door is the cow house. And the uh, cow house had 30. Uh, 15 or 16 stores, probably 30 cows. Quite a lot in the form of the egg which it had. So they're breaking the door down and being a complete villain or vandal. It's a really small peak of inside the cow house. I think I counted 16 stalls and I think there would be two cows to a stall. 30 odd cows in here then. It's a decent sized dairy farm for 70 odd acres. And judging by the style of the build of it, it's fairly modern. Well, modern ish. So, this would be the dairy. It's the opposite of the cow house normally, or close to it.
most of the buildings too are covered in ivy some very ornate details over the sheds there, the cart shed there's a big dairy farm in this day and uh, the top right hand building is the actual dairy I believe there's another little barn by the uh, gateway as you come in it could be a an implement shed of his own too. Again the ivy's on top of it. Decay takes over very quickly. Once the roof's gone the rest fall in very soon afterwards and ivy will drag it back into the ground, nothing surer. By the opening uh, in this little barn here or shed and the way the bricks are, this have been a cart shed but Looking at these old uh, drums here, some sort of heating by the looks of it. Just about covered in with the ivy was the old water trough. Most farms had one of these. So the stock got their ration. I'll have a look in what's called the hacked. What I'm looking for is a few old machines that were advertised for sale when they had a farm dispersal in 1943 when Mrs. Quayle Sr. died and they're advertising not a lot of stock but they had a McCulloch binder a Knapp seed drill and a McGregor Harrison Reaper, and usually these things would stay with the farm. Very few people would take them away. Looks Quite interesting. Is this it? Ooh, it's an old drag plow. Now that is a monster. Maybe more than horses pulling that one I feel. As the size of the mole boat in the back. Like a semi digger plow I guess. Oh, hang on. What do I see in the distance? Yes, that looks like it. <laughs> so this was the old nap drill, I think, if it says it on the side. Yes. You see that, folks? This was here in 1943. It was worth the trip just to find that. Don't think it'll be getting used again now. <sighs> On the side here you can just see where the um, the markers were for setting the drill. I can't remember what they mean these days. We had a similar thing, it was called a McCormick drill. And um, they diff these different numbers give a different sewing to the acre, I guess. Well. Oh, that was good to find. I wasn't going to stop because it didn't look that promising this place when I came down but I'm glad I did and um, do a bit of video on it. It's just a bit of history of it that I managed to glean before I came here. 
In 1846 there was farmed by a guy called Thomas Hall Priest and he had a dispersal sale held by a fellow called Cal. In 1858 there were still 40 acres and advertised again with the town of James Courty as having a lovely private harbour where you could collect your own bountiful seaweed as it said. 1864 period of William Quarry was a, a talent here. And he was a top class player and had won many competitions. Ran the problems though in the 1870s when Doubles Bank uh, called in the loan, I think. In 1903, he was a farm by a fellow called Harold Macbeth, and uh, he lost one of his Shire horses. And the only interesting thing about this is he was insured, as most farmers went, so he advertised that the horse stood on a nail or something, die with lockjaw and you've got to pay out from the insurance company. It's probably dead them a power of good in the uh, farming world. Uh, in the 1880s a uh, family called Tate's farmed here and they had a son called Waltz Tate and he joined the Allan Steam Packet Company. In 1906 he was stabbed in some frack arse in Liverpool, left a widow and kids. I don't believe it was. He, he was indeed the instigated off the uh, fracas. He was trying to help, I think. In 1919, it was found by Charles Charles Lamb, and advertised then about 80 acres, and he had a um, at that time it was then sold to Mr. Quayle from Colby, and made 2,470 pound. Which today is 131,000 quid. Still cheap for today's farm prices though. In 1940, um, George Tasker was uh, noted as living here and had moved from another farm because he got a wage rise up to 33 shillings a week. Can you believe that? You would buy you like a lollipop these days. That today is about 140 quid a week. And in 1943, Mr. Quayle died, left his whole estate to Annie Quayle, his wife, uh, which was valued at about £1,400. So that was 66 around today. And in 1943, Mrs. Quayle died too, so then there was a large dispersal sale with we'll some stock. I'll we'll put the list on the site so you can have a look at it, but the most interesting was a McCormick binder, which I used with my dad. He sat on the binder and I used to a tractor. And that drill, which we used, and a McGregor Reaper which I've never seen. And um, having walked around here, we did find an app drill which gave me joy to go back into my childhood. I don't think they'll be used again though. That's a quick trip around Erin Veg, which I'm grateful for being allowed to do. I'm not sure when we get down to the harbour, we may do that in the summertime.